Clunk. Thanks, Clunk. Change the names just a little bit as we go through here. Right. Clunk says, Dear Father Simon and the Confessional Collective, my tale took place at work some five years ago. A job that I still do today, which as building manager means that I spend most of my time on reception dealing with the daily issues whatever they may be. So I won't devolve too much information, my place of work, to protect those of us who are unwittingly involved in this unfortunate event. Again, I think a PG certificate is probably required. Yeah, yes. I would agree. Do you think? Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. I work along a very busy road in Liverpool that pre-COVID was full of cars, buses, people and a few dozen pigeons scattered along the pavements, busily eating what scraps they could, but minding their own business nonetheless. I just say at this point, confession regulars and hard timers <laughs> will know that as soon as there's a reference to a pigeon yeah. of any kind, <laughs> it's not going to make it through. I'm just, I'm just sort of, oh, really? I'm just teeing this up. It's okay. unlikely. Okay, okay. On this fateful day, Father Simon, the road was very much as I described it. When down came a group of women from the third floor offices with cigarettes and lighters at the ready, we exchanged the usual pleasantries. Hello, lovely day, isn't it? As we say in these parts. As they made their way outside, you know, I automatically <laughs> yes. just adopt the, yeah, the yeah, correct yeah. accent. Made their way outside instantly, lighting their cigarettes before the automatic doors had closed behind them. After a few minutes, one of the women came rushing back in with a very concerned look on her face. Uh, clunk, they said. <laughs> Just changed it at the last minute from David. There's a clunk, there's a sick pigeon out there. It's very sick. Uh, could you look after it until I come back down, please? Me and the girls are going to call the RSPCA and we're going to look for a box to put it in. Well, I was gobsmacked. How on earth could you tell it's a sick pigeon? How can you tell a sick town pigeon from a healthy one? Don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem with pigeons per se. I mean, those wood pigeons that you see on your way to work in the local park, they look clean and well-fed, but still, maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, I could see that Angela and her colleagues... Oh, sorry. I could see that Mary and her colleagues <laughs> seemed concerned for the well-being of this particular pigeon. So I asked Angela where the pigeon was, and I promised her that I would look after it until they came back down with a box for the pigeon. So I went outside and I stood next to the pigeon in question, which in fairness did seem to have a slight limp. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly I found myself cooing at the pigeon, trying to stop it from walking away and getting lost amongst the other limping pigeons that were out in force that day, and every other day for that matter. People walking past, probably wondering why on earth a man in a suit and tie was cooing at a limping pigeon as I walked this way and that to try and head him off and to keep it as close as possible to the building. I decided whilst cooing at it that it was called Graham and I struck up quite a good relationship <laughs> with this limp pigeon. Okay. Finally, after what felt like an age, Angela came back down and told me that they called the RSPCA. Great, I said, not lifting my gaze from the zigzagging bird in front of me. Uh -huh. What happens next? You can leave it to us now, said Sarah. <laughs> Fiona, carrying the box <laughs> with... Debbie at her side. Yeah. Now this I had to see. So being the gentleman, I stood back and watched the women, whatever they were called, <laughs> <laughs> opening the box. And they proceeded to chase the pigeon around the busy pavement. Now the first thing I noticed was that the poor bird's limp had vanished. Maybe it was just putting it on. Yeah. Or maybe it had cramp. Do pigeons suffer with cramp? No. I don't know. <laughs> How do you know? Do you know? How do you know? How do you they know don't. they don't? They're not going to have lactic acid in the legs. Oh, oh well, let's not get into this. But I mean, you don't. Like you're making a lot of assumptions. I guess I am. Yes. Are you a vet? Right. No, I'm not a vet. There's lots of things we don't know. <laughs> but do pigeons have lactic acid in their legs? Is not something that's been discussed <laughs> before. Discussed. Mm. Anyway, do pigeons suffer the crap? No, no, no. I was now picking up pace as two women clutching a box was chasing it left and right, scurrying this way and that. Now, what happened next was unfortunate. For the pigeon, it certainly was, because seeing as he couldn't shake off the two seemingly good Samaritans on foot, he decided the only way to avoid being caught and put in a box was to take flight, which it did, leaving the two women behind, clutching the box, but they were both cheering it as it left the ground. Hurrah, they said. It took off. It soared high, high into the air. We hoped it was heading to safety, but then... Oh, no. As the music changed, yeah. 
Just like the pigeon. Oh, in fact, actually, just like the pigeon on the telly. Yes. <laughs> Dastardly and Mully, just like that. Just like this. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> just like that, indeed. Just like that. It got into all kinds of trouble. Yes, they were cheering as it left the ground, but then it suddenly jerked and nosedived. We knew this wasn't going to end well. And lo and behold, the pigeon left this world, if it hadn't already, courtesy of the number 53 bus. <laughs> <laughs> now Sarah and Debbie let out a scream, scaring the living daylights out of the passers-by. I turned to look at... An another uh, woman from the office. <laughs> yes. She was already making her way to the lift. I take it you've got the number for the RSPCA. I asked. She shook her head, obviously already trying to find the words to explain what we had just witnessed to the person on the other end of the phone. Now, I ask you, Father Simon and Brother Matthew and Sister Susie, for your forgiveness. We were trying to help. This is the thing we were trying to help. The pigeon was ill. It was sickly. But as ever, the pigeon doesn't make it to the end of a confession. Maybe we all unwittingly played a part in the poor pigeon's early demise, but it happened not from evil intentions. No, but only from good intentions. And I wonder if you could bear that in mind, please, <laughs> as you come to your verdict, as you do now, very smooth link there. Yeah, very. Uh, Sister Susie from the pub. Uh, I'm going to be nice and short and sweet here. It, it, there was no malice intended. You were trying to help the pigeon. It wasn't your fault that he flew into the bus and, you know... I'm going to forgive. Very good, short and sweet is what yes. Matt's going to be as well. Yes. Brother from another gutter. <laughs> Circle of life, you know, that's what happens, isn't it? Uh, we're, we're here, then we're not here. And very much that's the case with the pigeons. Um, and RSPCA, do they deal with pigeons? Who knows? Um, but Do they have life, lactic acid? Do they have lactic acid? <laughs> In the RSPCA. Under disgust. Um, uh, did we change the name of the pigeon? Probably, but never mind. Uh, not the point. Uh, I'm going to forgive.